Okay. So. We just finished talking to Kami Manana. Um, we got the key. Some place I'm supposed to open the door of and then just like leave open and not go in but I'm definitely gonna go in and see what's up um. right to work right to work shame on you The tear machine step your bottles clunk in Ooh, 40 rail. Oh, and I also have the novelty check for tonight. So I have three days worth of not living on the streets. I'm not sure how long, like, how many games days this game has so hopefully that's sufficient for a while You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. It's like quiet. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. The radio. The frequency tableau lights up and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st precinct here. I'm putting him on. Hi, Alice. This is the officer from the 40, 41st precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. This is Officer Alice Demetri, precinct 57. How may I assist you? A voice replies in the radio. Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. Do you connect me to the 41st precinct? I have something I need to report. I was told I need to connect to my station, the 41st ladder. Earth. Need you to connect me to a civilian, Solvi. She may have reported a murder. Do you run a serial number from a pair of armored boots for me? Nor Alice and press the button labeled saved. You want a serial number from a pair of armored boots for me. Sir officer, what's the number? And the make of the armor, if you know it. Serial number, the make of the model of the armor is Fairweather. Oh. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. The International Collaboration Police, ICP, is an inter isolary law enforcement service. The crown jewel in the moral intern, Diadem, alongside EPIS and the coalition government. I was told I need to connect to my station. It will take just a moment, officer. Her voices fade out into the familiar radio static. <laughs> Gottlieb, what do you want? 
You hear a man clearing his throat, throat briskly, briskly, then an answer. He's carelessly chewing on a piece of hard candy. I was told to call the Lazarus. People are worried about me. Oh, it's you. You know who I am? Yes, there's no end to the misfortunes fate has seen fit to rain upon me. I'm sorry I've been such a bother to you. Sure, sure, but can you tell me about myself as in cool. who I am? You are? You lost your human visage a while back. Now let's get on with it. I've got more important things to do. I've lost my memory, all of it. With all the damage you've been dealing yourself with drugs and alcohol, I'm not surprised. You're not surprised? Okay, anything else? What else? I'm not a brain doctor. Look on the bright side, you've got a whole new life now. Use it wisely. It's hard to say if he doesn't believe you, or doesn't care. I think I've had a heart attack. And you survived it. Congratulations. Are you mobile? Yes. Even better. Anything else? I wouldn't worry about that. Officers your age have coronary trouble all the time. Also, death is a natural part of life. <laughs> Such a helpful doctor. Isn't there anything you can do for me? What? You want me to do blood work for you again? Tell you just how bad things really are across the board? You want another rundown of everything collapsing inside your body? Yes, I want the truth. You want the real, honest-to-God truth? Stop drinking? Eat magnesium and vitamin D. Our station is not our retirement home. We don't have the funds to deal with rock stars past their prime. Oh my goodness. And no, I don't want to hear a political commentary on the topic. In fact, I got work to do. Some idiot has glued his eyelids shut with cyanoacrylate. It looks like mectosin. <laughs> it's not fucking cryoacrylate. It's super glue, Doc. Cyanoacrylate is super glue. I guess that's it for now. Mm -hmm. The phone clicks. Suddenly you hear the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? That was so helpful. At least I got some experience from it. Could you connect me to the 41st precinct? I have something I need to report. Just a second, officer. She puts you in hold, the static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rattly voice is oddly familiar. 10 2, 10 5. This is 41st. Come in. Over. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop. And cops know relay code. 10-4, station 41, I've got an urgent business. Over. 10-4, message received. 10-5, relay message. What's your status? Over. Just reporting in. Over. 10-18, state your message, sir. I need to report my badge missing. 10-9, over. My badge, I can't find anywhere. It basically, it's gone. 10 4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 1022 the captain. Over. Is it him? What does he want? A dry voice access in the background. Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Hey, who is this? This is communication officer Jules Pidieu, sir. Over. No, the other one. You mean your partner? Over. Okay. I have a partner. What is he saying? <clears throat> He's asking who you are. I'm his goddamn partner. He was my partner now. It's your partner, satellite officer Vitmar, sir. Over. Did he lose his memory along with his fucking bed? Yep. The man in the background sounds like he's losing his patience. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. He says, fighting off laughter. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. 
<laughs> this would have been very important if I didn't know my name by now. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Come on, operator. Tell them to stop. Is it serious? Ha ha. Officer has lost his badge. Ha ha. Like I'm the first cop ever to misplace, it. misplace his badge. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh, God damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Come on, dicked us. Come on, operator. Tell them to stop. This is serious. He's asking you to stop. Says this is serious. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. Satellite officer Vikmar conquers. Losing your badge is serious. Over. Can't we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with it. Proceed. Ten four. I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. <laughs> well, at least I got experience for it. Fuck me. Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! I'm kind of regret doing this. Like, I'm not sure 30 experience points was worth the humiliation of this. What's going on? It's the guy with the... He super glued his eyes shut. Like, he has no place to talk. Super cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. <laughs> Didn't you glue your sh eyes shut earlier, and now you're making fun of me? <laughs> Could you please just stop saying lost his badge just for a moment? He asks you to please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? The room at the other end of the line erupts in volcanic, volcanic laughter. Sergeant Parson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. And you can hear laughter in the background. Enough with this now. I have other things to discuss. 10-9, come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. No heights even for Captain Sober! I'm just glad I haven't told them that I lost my gun yet. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his oh, gun no. too. Oh no. I have, but I don't want to tell them that. I don't want to tell them that I lost my gun too. Sergeant Orson wants to know if no. you lost your gun too. No. 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 I have to report it. Is that like... I still need to wash off the death smell. <sighs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Convince them that you didn't lose your gun. Lying over the phone? It's easy. Just say it like it's the truth. And then it becomes it. Admittedly, I probably should report to somebody that I lost my gun. However, I'm gonna just try to find it in time. No, of course I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine the poor prick who has to relay that kind of news to the captain. Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it and fast. We can't have some gangbanger running around with it. We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. You need further assistance. Over. Listen, I've actually lost my gun too. This might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay, then four, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Yeah, because I have my name, but I'd like to know more about myself. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. 
What's there to think about? You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone you lost your memory. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. How do you know he's not? Captain Four, sir, I'm not hearing your question. The radio operator inquires again. Hold on, are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information about myself. That's a negative, sir. I got 1012. Visitors present here. Over. I wanted to know if you got my badge description right in your report. Would you read it to me? Name, rank, date of birth. Looking for my address, I don't know where I'm from. Please refer to me with my last name in the future. There's no good... No matter what I do, they're gonna make fun of me. Do I ignore it? Okay. I have my name. Do I really need the other stuff? Do I really need any of this? Understood, sir. Over. Roger that. Ten ten. Over and out. This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? I need you to connect me to a civilian, a Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Of course. What is the number, officer? Kim, didn't Gart give you Sylvie's number? Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Start slapping a marching rhythm on your sl Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get to the phone. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? A female gr voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Hello, this is the police calling. I have some questions for you about your last days at work. Oh, right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? She recognizes your voice almost immediately. You quit your job at the Whirling. Why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. You can hear her tense up on the other side. Why not? Okay, did you leave because of Gart? What? No, why would you even think that? Told me he asked you out. Are you saying it didn't ha happen? Sylvie, don't be afraid of that pig. You have to stand up for yourself. So you agree that quitting your job just because someone asked you out is an overreaction? He told me you asked, he asked you out. Please, don't bring Gar into this. It's none of your business. God, why can't you just mind your own business? She mutters. I mean, fair. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. Again? Was it you who called the police? No, not me. But why didn't you call? Didn't a corpse behind your workplace bother you? What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the union already knew about the court. I meant us. You should have called the police. No one calls the police. The union would get angry. You can hear her address the receiver in her hand. What do you mean by that? You know, what the union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. I am the authority around here. It looks like there's a limit to my authority then. Tell me why exactly did you let a corpse hang in your own backyard for weeks instead of calling us? I am the authority around here. Okay. <laughs> she obviously doesn't want to challenge your authority. You feel much better now. I see. Maybe there's something else you can tell me about? I don't know what to tell you, officer. I didn't call you because I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. With the union. I'm sorry about that. Do you know who made that call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the union's phone, or the one on the coast. So the union has a phone. And there's one further down the coast. Got it. I think Kim said that it was the one down the coast that was used. It was someone else. 
We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Okay, next question. Yeah, go on. Have you seen my badge? Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. The law. This exact conversation has happened before. Establishing authority before this young girl seems to have been important to you in the past. Don't go there again. Wait, how did you first learn I'm a police officer? You, you told me back in the whirling. You told everybody and showed us your badge. I don't need to hear about it anymore. My badge is missing. Have you seen it anywhere? Oh, no, I haven't. Sorry. Real police would have uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? A nice sort of a uniform. Him doesn't have a uniform, and he seems real to me. He's in plain clothes, voluntarily. It's different from not knowing where your uniform is. Have you seen my gun? Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. <laughs> she sounds beyond excalibrated. I showed you my gun. When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating, and... She stops hesitantly, not sure if she should continue. And what? What did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It, it got pretty graphic. Jeez. Harry, you could have issues. Oh, those again. I have been trying to wean you off them. Off of what? Suicide jokes? You know, when you put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out? Off of that, people don't like that. Yeah, people don't like that? Harry! Hmm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, My brains are all over the wall, painting them red. I won't be seeing it, cause these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. Should have killed myself. Why would I threaten to kill myself? I mean, look at this world. I would love to stay. Okay, I don't know what to say. Yes, but what happened to my gun? Okay, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Me neither. Why would I threaten to kill myself? There is silence on the other end of the line. I should have killed myself. No, please. No more suicide threats. Thank God you don't have that stupid gun anymore. Yeah, it kind of sounds like Harry shouldn't have his gun. There are way more inventive ways than a gun to leave this world. Thank you, conceptualization. I really needed that reassurance. Yes, but what happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is next you were waving around money instead, saying things like big bucks cannot lie and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. So I sold it. It almost looked like you pawned it, but believe me, I did not ask. She sighs. Hey, I found my patrol cloak earlier, but have you seen my policeman uniform? Uniform? I, I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. The disco things. Okay, so... Sounds like I found all the clothes that I needed. Uh, do you know how my paperwork ended up in the trash container behind the whirling? Well, you tried to jam it down the toilet, sir, clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? She doesn't sound like she's actually that sorry. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Wait, why does she seem angry with you? Um... Why wouldn't she be angry with you? Yes, you have obviously done something to upset her at the Whirling in Rags, when she was still working there. Wait, before you go, you're mad at me, right? Tell me, what did I do? I can't remember anything. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the skewer thing happened just made me want to quit. Jeez, it's Harry's fault. What skua thing? The stuffed bird. The great skua. 
you threw it against the wall while screaming, fuck that bird, and laughing like a maniac. Oh, the ones guards trying to fix. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. Why do I always end up messing everything up? It was a pretty bird. There since I started working in Whirling. I really liked her. We call her Scotty. So you're telling me that I was the one who made you want to quit? Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you... She pauses. Go on, I want to know what I did. Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more. I I hate it now. Hold on, which song? We Go On by the OO. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. Sorry. Sorry about the song. The hell with that song. Then there was your room. Your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant, and I don't want to know. And then screamed something about how you're a piece of shit human being, and why does anyone even let you work as a policeman? That you'd fire yourself, but you can't even do that. I'm sorry. And then I had to deal with your toilet. The one you clogged with police documents, causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. Okay, I get it. I wasn't a very good tenant. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. I'm truly sorry for everything, Sylvie. God, I, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Try not to call me again, and let's pretend it never happened. But when I spoke to Gar, it seemed like he thought you left because of him. Wait, really? No, this is absolutely not true. I like Gar. I really do. Didn't he cross a line when he asked you out? No, I was actually flattered. I've always liked him. It was just bad timing, with the corpse and all that. Tell him then, because he feels real bad right now. There's a pause. You can almost see her on the other side. The telephone cord coiled around her index. I didn't know what to say to him later. Then you came and destroyed the place. So I left without explaining. <sighs> I should have told him maybe. I can tell him. Okay, but please don't mess it up. Please don't take out your gun or something. Well, I don't have a gun anymore, so I can't mess up in that specific way, at least. What else did I sing beside the oo oo? I'm looking for a song. Oh, all, all sorts of things. From disco, rock, too. So much disco and rock. Was I singing The Smallest Church in St. Siamese? Yes, that's the one you like to sing along to the most. The later it got, the more that one came on. Interesting. You still have to find a copy, though, before you can blast it. All right, thank you for talking with me. Take care. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Ignore Alice and press the button labeled saved. As always, it's DJ Mesh and Felicio, and you're listening to Three Freaks FM, bringing you the hottest, the nastiest, the most vulgar. A flock of seagulls takes off nearby, startled by the roaring radio. Right away, the lieutenant reaches into the cabin and turns off the radio. He's not looking at you as he says, Someone must have been messing with the radio, or maybe picked up a random frequency. You wanted the prime line, right? Speed Freaks FM, huh? Look at him in the eye. Oh, uh, is that what it was called? He's trying hard to act surprised. 
Go for it. Turn the radio back on while it's still on the Speed Freaks FM. Pick up the radio again. Souped up motor carriage for one bad, bad mama's boy. For 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 the heavier foot and the freaky arm. God damn it. The lieutenant moves quick as a viper as he switches off the radio and sets it on prime line. Then he turns Look, to Look, it helps me to stay alert on long nights, okay? It's a method. I'm not some kind of speed freak or... He shakes his head, furiously staring at his foot. What about heavier foot? You would be too if you had his motor carriage. He snaps, half seriously. But seriously, let's quit joking around, alright? We have a case to investigate. He turns back to the This is Precinct 57. Can I connect you to someone? 57. In the cabin, you see a set of stair. Okay. Well, we're not that taken care of. I wonder where I get that. his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. You said you're friends with Manana. Is that true? The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. What is in that borscht you're making there? Point to the large pot. The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his, and then seems to wait for you to speak. I wonder if I can get some. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. He doesn't know your language. You can just say something cool in return. Mercury rising, run your fingers through your hair. Hmm. Borscht need more vodka? Picks up a bottle from the shelf. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Yeah. Of course, vodka. Now that makes a very, very special borscht indeed. Turn it up and then ask for some yourself. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, the place is a powder keg. No, no vodka. Turn your fingers counterclockwise. Cut it. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. Okay. Well, I found out about... Borshk. Which was a thing. Can I help you? I talked to Sylvie. She left because of me, not you. Wait, what? But what about the bird? He looks up surprised. The bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing the morning she left. She didn't break it. I did. I threw it against the wall. You broke the skewer! His face is flushed with emotions. A rash covers his neck. I assure you it was him. Why on earth did you have to break the skewer? I just break things, it's the way I am. I can't believe it. I was so sure it was Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was trying to send me a message. A symbol of hope and all. A tender type of hope. Something stirs in you. Perhaps this is why you broke it. All right. 
Did she say anything else about me, you know? Did, did she say anything about me? You said she was flattered. It was just bad timing. Really? I, I should I should give her a call then. The man doesn't know oh, what to say. He wipes his brow and stares at the counter. Thanks, I guess. Was there anything else you wanted, or...? He gives you a short nod. We were sort of hoping there would be a gun, an expensive jewel, or at least a sword in it for you. If you deliver the message, oh well. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that he would have some clues about the badge or the gun I could ask about. My Not the 20 man. Royale. I have this giant no novelty check. You must be kidding, right? Yeah, good one, officer. Real funny. But this establishment only takes cash. Now, do you have that cash, Mr. Novelty Check Man? Fried, near the gates. They'll exchange it. The lieutenant sounds tired. Then why? Okay. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? She crosses her arms. Are you Lizzie, Elizabeth, Miss Buford? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. She points to the tall man by the table. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moves behind her eyes, in the way she stands, in her face. Easy Leo told me about you. He likes to talk a lot. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. Are you the hardy girl? I am not. She says dryly. You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a model. Even a mod? Glenn, I went to law school. I am an attorney. Her face stiffens. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of Le Debutante International. Get a grip, Glenn. She went to law school. So fucking what? Lots of models are actually really smart people, fuckwad. No, Glenn. They aren't. Her tone is cold and uninvolved. This didn't change her opinion of you. Sad face. It's not her. She's not a hardy girl. Definitely. Maybe we'll talk later. Okay, that's fair. She probably won't be one for violence. She went to law school, after all. So she's probably Behind smart enough not to get involved workers, with... Um, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. But she went to law school, so she's probably not... She's probably smart enough to, like, not get involved in murdering someone. Squint. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. It's not time yet. Look out the window. Nothing. Just black tangles like the hair of an old woman. Motionless. The wind in the yard doesn't reach the hawthorn, nor does the light come in from this window. Interesting. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Titus does not look particularly happy to see you. Just found a bullet in the hanged man's head. A bullet, you say? That's mighty curious. He pats the back of his head. Indeed. Mighty. How did it get there? The lieutenant is fixed on Titus. Well, there are so many bullets in the world, and so many heads. <sighs> I guess it's only logical. At some point, one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. It's bound to happen again, you know? Just statistically speaking, of course. He taps on his right temple. Sire, it would be an event most dramatic if you were to produce the bullet and dangle it before their very eyes. I'm going to ask you again. Why was this, show them the bullet, in the victim's head? Wow! He's got it in a real evidence bag and all. The little man leans in to inspect the lead in. 
why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. I think the hanging was a cover-up for the shooting. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid, and his brain grew around the bullet. Around the bullet, man. That's a good one. Alan pinches the root of his nose. All the goofing around is to avoid lying. It's a technique. Did you guys shoot him? Shit! I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know me when I'm drunk. Yeah, Glenn likes to shoot his guns when he's drunk. Better hope he stays sober. The little guy looks you in the eye. No, he meant before he was hanged. Did you shoot him before you hanged him? Before? After? During? This is getting ridiculous. They told you what happened. Stop wasting your time. She spreads her arms. Never been worried in my life, lawman. He crosses his hairy arms, having forgotten his beer for a moment. It's not like you blew it wide open, but there's a little crack in there, somewhere. Okay. I think the reason they're hiding the eighth party is because she shot him and they're covering up for her. That's why, that's like, I think that's why she's not with them. I think they're hiding her for a reason. Okay. So what can I do? There's something down there. The musty smell of a potato cellar in the spring emanates from the air vent. help you with I spoke with the lore men at the roundabout word has traveled yes but nothing of real substance has surfaced yet I gather wild pines has eyes on the intersection but not ears she smiles then explains one of the tall buildings overlooking the roundabout it would give them a read on the entire quarter it appears we are being monitored every step we take colleague did we have any other business here by the way I've talked to Everett Claire. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? I didn't. He's a beautiful man, beautiful and just. Everett Clare is a hero of the workers' movement. He's the champion I've sworn fealty to do. He's a bloated rainbow socialist. I can do business with him. For a socialist, he's reasonable. He's not the champion I have chosen. I wish to fe swear fealty to you and the cause of the capital. I have the feeling the international community does not approve of him. It's not important if I liked him. I was just doing my job. Of course, detective. Excuse me for implying otherwise. The RCM does not pick sides in this. I hope it doesn't come off any other way. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I am not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something... She turns to you. How could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. She smiles. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Mr. Everett is helping me find my gun. Helped him turn up the heat on the Borscht. The money you gave me, would that make things weird if I shared information, I mean? Weird? Oh no. One of the positive things to come from the revolution is the 
unhindered exchange of information, you see, even when it comes to trade secrets, which isn't to suggest our talks constitute corporate espionage. Even if they did, it would be fine. But they don't, since you logged the money as a donation, and this is clearly just gossip between friends. The lieutenant might have, but I don't remember you logging anything as anything, Harry. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Mr. Everard is helping you find my gun. Oh. That's so helpful of him. Her eyes become large and round. The lieutenant looks at you, and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. I regret it. Unconventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. Incredible. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? No. Well, maybe he's not as helpful as you thought then. I is there anything turn else? Turn up the heat on the Porsche. Did you now? What sort of borscht is he making? Unimportant. You're right, detective. That whole undertaking was very unimportant. Why did we do it? Actually, I turned the knob like this. Turned the heat down. Beyond curious. I will choose to interpret that as you turning the alcohol in the strike brew down. For the sake of our professional relationship. And because I don't like the idea of them any more drunk than they already are. What else? Of course, detect until then, is Okay, I probably shouldn't have told her any of those things. But you know. Um I am very deboss and I do not know how to keep the paper secret. Just an ordinary war. Nothing to see here. Why am I looking at this wall? Because you see it, finally. This wall is sublime. Look at it. The shadows, the colors. Let the conceptual joy flow into your pupils and blossom into thoughts in your brain. All the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. The uncontested pinnacle of Warcraft, color peeled from the very face of God. Oh, Warfather. Kim, I must paint this wall. Add even more beauty to it. Huh? He sounds tired of it all. <laughs> Poor Kim. Cindy the Skull has all the necessary materials. Talk to her. First, I know you're tired, Kim. But take another look at this wall. Draw nourishment from its beauty. Mm hmm Sure. The lieutenant looks up at the wall reluctantly, then back at you. I must talk to Cindy. Get the necessary materials from her. If you must. Besides, then adds in a resigned tone. Okay. This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. Okay, and I'm actually going to leave off there, because that is the stop. Yes? Aren't we going to talk about the boots I'm wearing? Okay. Let's talk about it. You stole the boots. 
He looks at the gleaming technological footwear you're sporting. Congratulations. That must have taken an enormous concerted effort. Considerable ingenuity and timing. Now, I'm going to report you and you're going to go to jail. These are not the same boots. I like them so much I went and bought myself a pair. Sure. Anyway, did you want something related to police work? Okay, that was anticlimactic. Anyway, talk to you next time.